In this video, we're going to cover the skeleton of our app. So this little outside area here, but also we're going to work on the to-do list section and then maybe like a little plus button that shows up uh, over here. So this is the UI that we're aiming at, something like this, where we've got a search section up here. And notice that we've got like um, icons here for our shopping. I'll show you how to do icons. And we've got an icon for our plus button and our logout section over here. This is what we'll be building, the basic layout of our website. And we're also going to add what to-dos look like. So let me just add one in this example app. Uh, lettuce, for example. So we're also going to work on this little section here, the to-dos themselves. All right, so let's go ahead and make that happen. But first, I wanna change the icon library that we're using behind the scenes. And this will give you a good opportunity to learn how to do that. But also the icon library we're going to use just has a richer number of icons for you to choose from. Okay, so let's go into quasar.conf.js and I'm going to scroll up here and we're looking for the extras section. Here it is here. Now, by default, notice we're using material icons. We're going to comment that out. We don't want to use material icons. We're going to use the MDI version five icon library. So I'm going to save that and have a look at what happens to our user interface. It's just going to take a second for our um, dev environment to load. And there we go. Notice that everything is kind of messing up now. A, a, a little drop down arrow in our select menu is also messed up as well. And so there's a couple of things we need to do. First of all, we need to change how we use some of these icons. So for example, if I go to main layout.view, uh, this button here, so this menu button, instead of the icon being menu, we're going to use MDI-menu. And that's how you use icons in the MDI icon library. You say MDI- and then the name of the icon. However, notice that the Quasar component, its icon is kind of messed up now. So the reason is, if we go to quasar.conf.js and we search for the word icon set, and there it is there. By default, it's using the material icons icon set. We want to change that to MDI version 5. So this is basically saying, hey, Quasar, for your components, for the components themselves, I want you to make sure you're using this icon set. So let's go ahead and save that. Give it a second to reload. And there we go, it's using the right icon now. Now, I'm not gonna fix up these icons on the left here because we're actually going to remove this section entirely. So don't worry about that for now. So without further ado, let's go ahead and start building the UI. I'm going to jump into index.view. And by the way, let me just show you this. If I open up the, man, uh, the left menu here, I almost always search for things because it's much faster to search for what you're looking for rather than find what you're looking for. So that's like a little tip for um, being faster in your editor. If you go control P and search for the file you want, you're going to find it a lot faster than looking through a menu here. But anyway, I'll show you from the left menu for a little bit just so you get used to it. If we go to pages, index.view, we're going to work on that section there. Now next, I wanna make sure that this is wide enough that the left menu shows. We're going to deal with the smaller screens later on. So we're going to deal with the fact that you can click on this button to show that left menu later. So for that reason, I wanna bring it all the way up to a larger screen size. So we're going to develop this screen size that shows the left menu by default first. Now we'll get rid of padding here and have a class equal to row. And this is going to be familiar to you if you're used to using something like uh, bootstrap or honestly just about any other grid related system and i'll give you a quick rundown if we have a row we can then have a number of columns that build up that row and they need to add up to 12. if they go to over 12 then they're going to overflow so i'll give you a really quick example here let's have a div but we're going to cover this later on and we'll give it a background equal to blue and i'm just going to give it a bit of a height as well like so and now if I add in here, column dash three, it's going to take up three out of 12 units. So let's say another one of those and change the color of this one to purple. And then, so three plus three is six. If we add in another six, it will add up to 12. So if I change this to six and make the color green, 
that's how this grid system works. But once again, I'm going to cover that in a later video. So if you don't understand rows and grids, don't worry because I promise that's coming. So we're going to have a Q dash card in here and it's going to have a column extra small of nine. The reason I've written extra small here is because you always start with the smaller size and then you build up from there when you're doing um, layouts. That's usually the recommended way of doing it. Next, I wanna add a Q dash toolbar in there and let's give that a background of primary and save that. There we go. So that's a little bit of a start. This is going to be our to-do section. And that's going to be the search bar, this section here. So anyway, moving on, let's add in a Q-list component. And so if I come back to our design here, we're now going to add in this list item. So coming back, Q-list, and then we have a Q-item, Q-item-item. Dash section. Now this might seem like a lot. We've got a list and then an item and then an item section, but it's all going to make sense in a moment. Basically, you've got a list with items. So that part is obvious. This item section allows you to have a lot more styling control over what is within the list. I'll show you what I mean. Now we can say here Q dash checkbox and let's give it a model dash value equal to true by default because we're not going to implement the functionality for that for now. And there we go, we've got our checkbox showing up. Now we can add another section, q-item-section. And in this section of the item, we wanna have the name of that to do. So how about go shopping as an example? Very nice. Now notice that it's pulling all the way across here. That's because by default, it's going to try and spread it nicely across the entire item section. However, if we add in here the word side, this is indicating to Quasar that this is a side item and the styling will fix itself accordingly. So let me save that. And there we go. Now that it knows that it's a side item, it can fix the layout for us so that it looks nicer. Now let's come down here and add another Q-item-section and this can be our delete button. So let's have a Q-button and we'll have an icon on that button equal to MDI-delete. Save that. And there we go, we've got our delete button. Once again, this is a side item. So let's add in here, side. And it's going to fix the layout of that a little bit for us. I also wanna flatten this button. So let's say flat and save that. Oh, hang on, I put that on the item section. So let's come to the button and say flat. And there we go. I'll just fix that layout properly there. And there we go. And we can also say something like round. I like rounded buttons. So now when I hover it, it's got that rounded um, highlight. Whereas if I didn't have round there, it would give me more of a square highlight. So let's bring that back to round. And I also wanna make it a little bit smaller. It feels like, it feels too big for a delete button. So let's say the size is equal to small. And there we go. This is our list item. We have a to-do. We've got a nice little check button there and we've got a nice delete button that we can use as well. Next, let's figure out this search section. So I'll show you what that looks like. Notice that we've got this search section that sort of sits close to the top bar. So we've got a bar, whoops, we've got a bar, then a search section, and then our to-do list. So if I come back here, we've got our bar, and now this needs to be a search section. So how are we going to do that? Well, first of all, I wanna get rid of this shadow here. So if we go into main layout, oh, I'll show you that in the menu. Layouts, main layout. And notice that on our header section, we've got the word elevated. That's what adds this little bit of a shadow under here. So if I get rid of that, it just flattens it out for us, which is exactly what we want. So back in pages, index.view. I also wanna remove the background color here. I put that background color in just so we could see it whilst we were developing. So let's get rid of that. And there we go. And now we can add in that search section. Open that up. And we want to use a Q dash input for that. And then we can say model dash value. And by the way, if you're used to having, for example, here value, that's what it used to be in view two. But now in view three, it is model dash value value if you want to send a value through to a component. So this isn't a Quasar thing, this is a view three thing, this model value syntax. So I'm going to set that to filter, or maybe we'll call it search. 
Yeah, let's call that search. And if I scroll down here, we can add in a data section and change that from selected to search and make it an empty string. And I'm not sure if I mentioned this before, but in this video, we're going to be using the options API, not the composition API. And then later on in the series, we will convert everything to the composition API. That's just so that this series is more approachable for everyone. And I think I mentioned it as well, but if you would like to, then you can convert everything I'm doing to the Composition API. That would be a really good way to practice learning the Composition API. So next, I'm going to set this to full width. So we'll give it a class equal to full width because notice that the width is now changed there. Save that. And now it takes up the full width. I don't want to have this line underneath. So what I can do is say borderless, save that, and that gets rid of the border. And we'll add in a placeholder here. So let's say placeholder is equal to search. And there we go. Now it's more obvious that that's a search field. Next, I want to have this icon showing up on the right side. So we come back to our original design. Notice that we have this magnifying glass. So let's come back here. And we can do that by adding inside of here a template. Almost every component in Quasar has a whole bunch of slots that you can use to really customize your component. So anyway, let's have a template here and add in append. And I'll just put some text in here, append, just to show you what that looks like. So that it adds in some append text. And now we can set this to a Q-icon. And let's give it a name equal to MDI-magnify, I believe it's called. And now we have that magnifying glass. Now, if we come to our design here, notice that there's a little bit of a line that separates it. So I think the way I'll get that is by adding a border to the list or maybe to the card. I don't know. Let's have a look here. So if I come to our list, here's our queue list. We can add in here bordered. There we go. By adding bordered, we now have that border showing up at the top and it separates the two. And the last thing I want to do is make this search area a little bit denser. And we can do that by literally just adding the word dense. So check this out. Look how wide it is. Or look how high it is. Save it. And it just makes it a little bit smaller so that it can fit into tinier places. So I think that's done.